told me you're lazy and uncreative. You will never work for anything that I do. It shows that you don't actually give a f either. If the culture is strong, new people will become like the culture. If the culture is weak, the culture will become like the new people. If you get like 5,000 in sales so far, you should probably trademark your business. Just in your LLC. If you don't have an LLC after 5,000, right. you're doing something wrong. When you don't have someone that can guide you the proper way, you end up having to pay way more money than you're supposed to. Product photos do not belong on Instagram. People are not looking to be sold to. Stop posting flyers. They don't work at all. And then you're wondering, why is my engagement low? It's because of that. Was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome, Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And on this episode, this is for my entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs. We're finally being transparent about what we wish we knew before starting our business slash brand how to find intentional opportunities at networking events, the full review of an amazing book, Diary of a CEO by Stephen Barlett, and then we know the business and branding predictions for 2024 you've been asking. We gave some, not all of them, there's still more, but then we have so much more to this episode. Moose, how do you feel about this one? Yeah, this is the one, man. It's always better to work smarter than harder. So trust me, there's some game for you in this. Let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force. But more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. And of course, this episode is powered by Ecamm Live, the number one all-in-one streaming platform that not only allows you to stream on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, every social media platform, but it is amazing for pre-recorded videos like this podcast that is the reason why we have this podcast is Ecamm Live. It does great for Zoom calls, Google meetings, presentations, you name it, it could do it. And we're giving a 14 day trial on us. If you go to www.nikkiamoose.com slash Ecamm, that's E-C-A-M-M -M for that 14 day trial. Moose, how are we feeling? Man, feeling good. Feeling good. Things are well. Just uh, fresh off of a long event day, um, okay. which is a little interesting. Uh, but, you know, things good are good. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, of course, we he is in New York this week. So, we anytime he's in New York, we usually link up for whatever he has going on. But this one caught us by surprise because it was supposed to be a quote-unquote gig, but turned out to be a full, long event agenda that ran several hours not the typical 30 minute 45 minute keynote in and out all right see you later so here i am i'm just like oh okay all right this is uh totally unplanned for but yeah the good stuff nonetheless though man i think the the one of the things i took away from today not so much uh can't can't say i had enough time to watch anything uh, uh entertainment wise but at least the lesson i took from being there at the event today is that it shows the growth in someone's career, right? Because for, I remember first being there and I was so caught up in wanting to watch or listen and hear what he had to say. And then now as I recognize what the purpose of events are really about, I was, I don't want to say more interested, but I was equally as interested in listening to and connecting with other people in the room and seeing what they had to say. So it's like, okay, I know this person. Uh, I came with him, you know, we work together. That's great. But what other opportunities are here? How else can we add value to the situation beyond just having him there and presenting or whatnot? So I think that was a, that was a good, a good moment just to think, to know that in every opportunity, there are multiple opportunities. If you can get your head up out of the situation that you're in 
and say, okay, well, what's next? What else can happen? What else can be different here? So that was good. We ended up connecting with a couple other people there. So, you know, it should be nice. We'll see what, what comes out of it. That's good. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think we, we've, we've been talking about that where events is really more of the networking side and meeting new people than necessarily, I don't know, than the, the information side. I don't think we, yeah. at least for me, I think the information is really in the, in our fingertips and on our laptops and, and everything. So that's not hard, but it's, it's not easy to network and it's not easy for that physical connection. So yeah, no, that's a, that's a good thing. Look at you networking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, as an introvert, that's not natural. So for me to be like, yeah, you know, just talking to people and all that good stuff. So it's uh, it's good to get out there and get that experience for sure. That's a vibe. I like that for you. I like that for you. Uh, Semi-major announcement. Se- semi, just cutting this off real quick. Uh, we said last week uh, we would announce it. But this week, uh, our Patreon is live. Okay, we've been working very hard. We have over 600 post content pieces inside of Patreon, which is crazy. So for the first time ever, the after show video is available. The audio, early access to the episodes, a community. It's a vibe. Go to Patreon. Look up Nikki and Moose or just go to patreon.com slash Nikki and Moose. It's there. It's $4 a month. Okay. That's 13 cents a day. That's it. Okay. Uh, We do have another tier where we're going to do our lives that you normally see in 2024. That's getting cut back and is going only for our Patreon users. Right. So that's the top tier one, which let me shout out. Because uh, we got members. We did a slow launch. We, like a, a, a small launch. Right? Uh, on our broadcast channels and on our lives. So Brittany, Teresa, and Billy. Right? Shout out to our creator, Av Squad. They are some of the top tier people. So head over to Patreon. So you don't miss out on any of our content any of the things that we have going on, there's going to be new stuff coming soon. So, Patreon. However, um, as far as for me, the there's this book I've been talking about for a little bit, kind of hinting, and I really doubled down on the notes this time, and it is the Diary of a CEO. I actually got it. It's right here. Diary of a CEO. It's really good. The 33 Laws of Business and Life. Extremely, extremely good book. Um, Probably going to listen to it three times. I already listened to one, so I got two more times, right? So some of the things that have really popped out this first go-round is, there's a few. So one, he starts off with the four pillar of greatness, Right. One is self. And we're so big on that about self-awareness. So the first one, self. The second one is story. He says something to the fact that those telling captivating, inspiring, emotional stories rule the world. And I found that so interesting because I believe that we said before in the past that those who control media pretty much control the world. And then when you break down what media is, it's really storytelling So the fact that he put that as part of one of his pillars of greatness kind of like triggered something. I'm like, okay, cool. Right. The third one is philosophy, which is your beliefs. And the fifth, uh, the third one. And the fourth one is team, which you can't do anything without a strong team. So that right there, I was like, okay, I see where you're going with this. I'm not mad. So I, I'm definitely studying that that part as far as what he's saying with the different pillars. And that's how the book is kind of cut through like those different, all, all those four parts are cut into those three different, 33 different laws. I can't even talk today. This is amazing. Um, but there was one going into a content creator side 
there was one part that really stuck out that I'm now starting to use inside of my own personal YouTube channel, but also uh, Nikki and Moose as well, where he was talking about how certain words we can be numb to. So if we continuously hear certain things every single day, every single time, we're going to not necessarily react to it. Uh, an example that he gave was like, share, comment. We hear creators say that all the time to the point where we don't even feel like we need to do it because we know you're going to say it so s another 50 million times. So we'll get to it when we get to it. And there's a, a certain thing that he says to kind of disrupt our mind in order for you to pay attention. So in the beginning of his podcast, he normally goes and he looks at the analytics of all the people who aren't subscribed, the percentage. So he'll say like 74% 74, 74 of you that watch this channel frequently do not subscribe. If you've ever enjoyed our video, please hit the subscribe button, which pretty much calls for reciprocity, right? It helps this channel more than you know, and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests, guests get. So that's like a future uh, promise and a reward. So he, in that sentence, he captures your attention, makes it where, hey, if I've done anything for you, just, just do this. That's all I need. And let me tell you what exactly could happen when you do this, because more and more, the more subscribers that we got, you've seen some of the big names that we've gotten. That's only going to continue, which I don't know what more bigger names he can get, which is very interesting. But that is uh, that's one of the things that really, really popped out to me that I'm like, yeah, OK, what are some of the words that we're numb to? And not only just from a content side, but also more of a marketing side when you're talking about whether in your copy, whether you're talking about in your emails, all these different things. I'm like, what words are we so numb to? Even in our captions, what are we numb to? So that's that's one of the lessons. Another lesson that I loved about this book was he says something to the effect of your skills are worthless, but your context is valuable. And so he used this uh, example of a like violinist, I believe I could be wrong. Something of a of a very expensive music instrument, right? I don't know what it, but I'm gonna say violinist. So this dude goes to concert halls, gets paid thousands and thousands of dollars for what he does, but then he goes and disguises himself to be kind of like a street performer. And one day only made $52. People would ignore him back and forth, probably curse him out if he's in New York. Uh, and it really showed that, like, it's not really about the skills. It's really about where you position yourself at. So you could be the most skillful person at the world, but if we don't know you, we don't know you. And it goes towards the whole idea of perception is everything as well. Because if he was a street performer and sounding immaculate that he does and no one cared, it's like, eh. But if you put him in, in performing for the president, performing for the, the, the royalties in, in, in the UK and everything, then... We're like, we're paying attention to you. Hello, who are you? Like, we've seen multiple people on different platforms. We're like, hold, hold on, who are you? And when you break it down, they may not know more than you. They may not have done or experienced the same or more than you, but their position correctly. And so you look at, are we positioned correctly? It's, it's not, are we good enough? It's just, are we positioned correctly? So that's something that that stuck out. And then the, the last lesson without giving you everything away, even though it's 33 laws. So I would be here forever if I gave you everything 
is this bar that he said where it was like, if the culture is strong, new people will become like the culture. If the culture is weak, the culture will become like the new people. And that stuck out to me for the simple fact that I'm really big on community. And I've been in certain communities where I felt that, yo, this needs to be changed. This needs to be changed. This would make it better. And then there's other communities that I've been that I had to like, oh, these are these. This is what we do here. We have to be here at this time and we have to uh, report at this time. And and so there was one that I didn't necessarily feel I had to change. And then there was another one that I felt like if I don't, I would be felt left out that it, it just I didn't fit in right because I had because I didn't go along with the certain rituals that it had. So the importance of creating a strong culture with your followers when we're breaking it down into, you know, your your brand side, creating a strong culture inside of your community, inside of your 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 follower count. Let's say you go live, even in your comment section, what is acceptable, what's not acceptable? Do people feel like they can go into your comments and say anything? Or is there people that will help kind of take care of that? If you have a private community, do people understand uh, the different rituals? Do they understand your beliefs? Do they understand the secret language that you may have, right? And if you want to break down the secret language, that's almost like uh, every city in their own slang and every language in their own way of sounding. Do you have that when it comes to your your brand and your business? So the, it, it's a really, really, really good book. Um, and like I said, it's Diary of a CEO by Stephen Barlett, right? He has a podcast, but this book is definitely something to cop. I've been giving it away uh, inside of Deeper Than The Brand for those people who've been active. It's it's fire. I, I guess uh, the next couple of people who join our Patreon will get you a copy of the book too. Uh, just say, uh, Nikki, Moose, this episode, uh, episode 167, I believe we're on. At yeah. 167, you said I could get a book. I'm here for my book. So, uh, come through. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. That's what I'm saying. That's a really good deal. Yeah. Spend 13 cents and get you a book that's worth right. Right. $25. Shoot. That's a I'm good deal saying, right what is there. It? How much is this book? I think this book was like 24 or something like that. So you come, you come for a month, $4, you get $24. That's I'm a good saying. deal. It's a good deal. Not even asking you for shipping. Not even asking you for shipping. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I like the title too. It's titled right after the podcast. So it's yes. like some good some good branding there too. Yes, it it all it all goes together. It's it, like I said, I've been really I've been really amazed and, and you're going to see based off the creator of the week too. Um I've been really amazed with you know, with Stephen Barlett. Shoot. With I really feel like something's in the water overseas. Because we're we're that? We're starting to see more and more UK stuff. Yeah, yeah. In in the US. Like it's starting to be like a new norm. And I'm like, what what's the crossover? Yeah, what the two happened? worlds are becoming interconnected. Yes. So I'm I'm very I'm very interested in in that culture, but I, I really like what he's doing with his podcast the guests that he has and um the book is the book is great like i said i'm gonna read it uh one more time before the the uh year ends so yeah no that sounds the the team takeaways are fire too i like that last bar you dropped i think you would really like That's, this book yeah, I think yeah really no, like I, this book. I, from what you've shared for sure i got one credit on my um uh, on my audible so i'm gonna yeah, go do that. Have to utilize in that I'm, I'm saving. Yeah. I'm saving minds. Uh, Ali Abdal is coming out with his book, the productivity book. Um, I believe December six. So I'm definitely going December six, December twenty six. So after Christmas, 
So for those people who celebrate Christmas. Um, so I am definitely going to check that out and see if it's worthy of getting the hard copy. Because for those people who don't know how I read books, I listen to the audio. And then if it's worth, uh, if it's worthy, I get the hard copy and then I listen to it while I read it so I can really absorb what's happening. Uh, that's how you know yeah, you have a good book. So if I have your audio and not, not the hardcover, it wasn't a good book to me. I'm just saying. <laughs> just, I need both. I need, need both. both. I mean, if we really trying to absorb this stuff, but eh, whatever. Anyways, so let's get to the creator of the week. Now, like I said, the creator of the week is connected to the book that I just said, no, it's not Stephen Barlett, but it is his marketing director, Grace Andrews. She did this, uh, this podcast, man, I wish I, I knew the name of the podcast, but there's this clip that has been living rent free in my mind ever since I saw it on Instagram. So this is Grace. Product photos do not belong on Instagram and I will hang my neck on that line. Like product photos do not belong on Instagram because people are not looking to be sold to. It's like a repellent to organic social media users. They don't want to feel like they're being sold to and they don't want to feel like they're consuming something that's an ad, which is why Red Bull do it so well because you go on their feed and they're creating a feeling, a community, a connection, which is what we need to achieve with our social media organic channels. Your organic channels, in my opinion, are your opportunity for reach and the content should be all about kind of reach, growth, connection, community. That right there is nothing but truth when it comes to the product pictures and how flyers and everything that just suck now. Stop posting them. Please look at me. Look at me. Stop or listen to me, whatever it is. Stop posting flyers. They don't work at all. And then you're wondering, why is my engagement low? It's because of that, right? The bar, she said at the end, super fire. But she's, uh, what I love, and maybe this is because this is similar to my story, when you have such a big influencer and now their team is starting to come out and share the tips and tricks about how that growth has happened, it just, it does something for me. So... Uh, she's been on different podcasts. She's been giving away a lot of gems that are so amazing that I'm actually learning from. They did amazing. I think I, we, we spoke about it. The, their book launch. It was so fire. There's this vlog on Steven's page where you will see grace and they launched the book and they gave it to influencers and to be able to make sure that the influencers put it on social media they got this big like box with a lock. And the only way you can unlock the box is if you post it on social media and tag Steven. And so that was almost a guaranteed that, hey, uh, this is going to be exposed to millions and millions of people because the way that he did it was the influencers, not necessarily micro influencers. So th these are people with millions of followers. So that had like an 80, I believe 82 or 87% success rate doing wow. that. And I believe in totality that book launch had cost about like 27,000. The, 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 the actual influencer book, I, I, I got, I'm proud. It's either 27,000 or 2,700. I don't know, but there was a 27. Okay. Either or, it's a lot of money, but it was successful. And so she was part of that whole thing saying, yo, we spoke about this pretty much over a year before it even launched. We had this all planned out. So shout out to Grace. Um, just an amazing individual. And go check her out. Have you uh, heard of this creator? I have not. I have <laughs> not. I, I have know, not. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did not know Stephen's team was uh, was that large. So yeah, oh, no. 
they have researchers, they have multiple editors, they have uh, project manager, they have everything. That podcast is literally like a crazy team. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they yeah, don't what, play. What you shared, what you mentioned, I think it was on the after show a couple of weeks ago when you talked about how they pick their clips. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? You mm-hmm. were saying how I think sometimes they use, is it they use ads or something so they to have, see yeah. how people respond. So the thing, and I really, if anybody can get in contact with Grace or Steve or anybody, I want to know that AI trackpad. So if y'all didn't, And I don't know if we could just interrupt me and put the clip, but uh, Stephen uh, talked about how when he's in the interview and there's a really dope thing that he says, he hits a a track pad that is AI that is transcribed and they take that and they test it out on different ads to see what's going to work and what's not. And then they also do that with thumbnails. They test out you know, they, they make a hundred thumbnails. They make 20 titles and a hundred thumbnails for each video. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I've been, I've been really like paying attention to that thing because their growth is disgusting, like super disgusting. And then, like I said, if you are making waves in the U S I'm paying attention to you. Like, I, shout out to everybody who lives in the U.S. Great. I am paying attention to you, too. Don't don't get it twisted. Yeah, but yeah. it's a different it's a different vibe when you're over there to come over here and, it's and everybody's it's talking here. about yeah. you. Yeah. So, yeah. Shout out to shout out to Gray. Shout out to Stephen Barlett. Um, but, yeah, that their their team is disgusting. Yeah, their team is disgusting. Fire. Yep. Fire. But let's get into the meat and potatoes of everything. So today we're peeling back the layers of entrepreneurship. We've talked about some of the lessons that we've learned before, but now we're going to be very intentional with what we've learned the hard way. The insights that's only come with experience and the wisdom that we had right, that we wish we had right from the start. Whether that you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just starting out, these reflections are bound to resonate with you because, Lord, we went through it. Okay, we have gone through it. Now, first, we're going to start with reflections that are just floating on the Internet. We found some really good ones that we want to talk about, but then also we're going to be talking about our own personal experience and and share our own personal journey, the hard earned, hard earned lessons, the insights that we can only gain through experience. So whether you're just starting or whether you're already in the midst of everything, this is the episode. This is the video. This is the clip that you've been dying to listen to because like I said, Lord knows we went through it. So let's dive into the very first one, right? Which comes from Finesse and Dantes, right? Dantes was on Finesse's podcast and he's talking about, you know, things I wish I knew before starting a business. This is what I was doing in the beginning. But one thing I would say is like, I didn't know much about write-offs. So I was just thinking I was doing something. Yeah but I didn't have no accountants. So I didn't know how to write it off. So, you know, eventually we got into getting an accountant and it's been smooth sailing since. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, would you say like with your first profit, go ahead and get that trademark? Um, I wouldn't say even in the beginning, I think you should prove the concept first. So make sure that you're getting consistent sales and trademarked it. Like if I'm be honest, if you get like 5,000 in sales so far, you should probably trademark your business. Mm-hmm. Just and your LLC. If you don't have an LLC after five thousand, right. you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't be like, and I know I say that, but I don't. I don't want you to be scared that you don't have it yet. Like, just know you need to go get it ASAP. Yeah, yeah, very, very important lesson. And if I may add, not just get an accountant, but make sure you're working with a CPA. Right, because there are some rules and regulations that a CPA would know about that a standard accountant may not know about. So 
that's definitely one of the things that I've learned the hard way myself after having to pay tons of fines and fees and interest and late payments and all this stuff for things that you think you're doing the right way to also realizing that I think the, the probably the most disappointing thing about taxes or accountants or anything of that nature really is that this is your hard earned money that you work so incredibly hard for. And when you don't have someone that can guide you the proper way, you end up having to pay way more money than you're supposed to for not simply just putting down what you do, right? Like, or, or properly documenting it. So I remember reading a book and you guys should all get this, by the way, because this is one thing that has helped me counteract even the knowledge of the CPA. So there's a book that I read by Tom Wheeler, Tax-Free Wealth. And I have the book, but I also got the audiobook. So there's probably an important book by Nikki Standards here that you guys should check out, at least in, in my library. But he says one, um, you know, one important thing about you should know so that you're educating the accountant alongside with you, right? Like you're telling him about the inside and out of your business that he can now tell you, oh, okay, you may qualify for this or may qualify for that. So I know this is one of those boring topics and you hear me from time to time mention taxes, like, hey, it's tax season, hey, is this, is that. But really because I find it to be so important and I've talked to other business owners, when I hear about their tax bill, it's not like they're making way more money that, you know, that you're like, okay, no, that makes sense. It's like, no, they're just not really maximizing what is available to you. So when you hear things like Donald Trump paying a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is that he pays in taxes, you know, and everyone gets upset at that. At the end of the day, as someone who's utilizing the tax code or whatever advantages made available to them in a very unique way. So I can't, I can't stress the importance more. I would say an attorney, a CPA, and uh, of course, this is not related to the professional services, but having some good doctors that you have or know, very important, very, very important for every entrepreneur, attorney, CPA, doctor. Yeah. Who was it? I think Berner uh, did a video. I think I said it in the after show or something where he was like, yo, the newest flex is an uh, at home doctor. Mm. That's what he said. He was like, bump the cars and everything like an on call doctor. If you have that, then you're doing something. Yeah. Just a relationship with one to know, or at least be like, Hey, I went to this person. They said this, 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 and that. Does this sound right? Mm -hmm. Because you could, you could get some medical advice that is really tainted. If you, you don't have inside knowledge around what's right and what's wrong. So someone who's just pure hearted or at least is okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I don't profit from this. I just want to make sure you're getting the right medical attention or advice. So that to me, I've always found like those doctor friends can come handy in a big way. Shout out to doctor friends. Can we? <laughs> Shout, Shout out to out doctor to friends. Doctor friends. <laughs> doctor friends. <laughs> this is uh, so. Next up, now we got to talk about uh, things that I, I wish I learned when starting my brand from a marketing side, and this one comes from a tip that I found on TikTok which is from uh, Daz Animations. And this is what he had to say. I wish I knew this marketing strategy before starting my brand. Sell the whole, not the drill. What this means is instead of trying to sell your product for how it looks or what it does, sell the results, benefits, and lifestyle of it. This is how you create long-term customers who actually connect with your brand and return for more. An example is Cortez. People didn't only buy it because they liked how it looked, but also because of the lifestyle and style that was sold with it. So make sure to apply this to your brand, and that's why. So, I'm so big on this lately because I, I've, I feel like there has been several maybe products or services that I've concentrated on the actual information, actual product, actual, you know, thing where I didn't really embody 
the power of community and how does it make someone feel? How is it going to um, gain them any type of status in some way, shape or form, right? I, I always look at these four desires that people have, right? That's like how to save time, how to save money, how to, or make money, of course, save and make mon money, how to feel accepted and how to gain status, right? And so in, in those four, we got to look at, does our brand does, does that for, for any of our people? And if so, let's lean on that. Let's not necessarily lean on, okay, this is the better product and it has all these different specs and it has so many different things. Like if we look at it from a tech world where we're looking at the megabytes and the megapixels and tribe vectors and all this other stuff that no one knows in real life besides other tech people. And then maybe you want to address only tech people. That's fine. But you, you're looking at a smaller audience compared to the people that you're messing with from a feeling standpoint. So a great example is like Apple, right? Apple don't necessarily focus solely on the specs where maybe HP did. Uh, if y'all remember back in the day, Gateway, I mean, Dell's, where Apple has truly sold a lifestyle, a feeling. We look at their events and could care less all the specs that they say, because nine out of 10 times, all, all they're going to say is bigger and better and, and last longer, right? And then they go through the little all these different things. And we're like, what else can it do? What is the pretty stuff that it does? Let me see the commercials of all the famous people using it and regular smegular people using it and all the different scenarios. Wow. I want it. Cause they've perfected selling the lifestyle and selling the feeling. So that right there of things that I, I wish I knew before starting the brand is really understanding how to trigger the feelings, the acceptance of people, because then they're like, yo, this is fire. This is where the whole perception is everything. Yo, I'm wearing this. I'm in this community. I'm doing this. I'm in this program. I'm buying these shoes. I'm buying, I'm going to this event and everybody else is too. It may be mid. We've we've seen bought stuff that is mid. I'm not. I'm, I've touched mine. I'm not saying mine is mid. I'm not saying that. But we've we've bought stuff that is just mid. But because of the brand, we don't care. There's a lot of people who feel like that when it comes to Louis, Gucci, Dior, Chanel. That some people will say, "Yo, I know some brands that are better." They don't care. They don't care. They will pay for the status. There's oh. some cars. I like, I love my Honda. I stick with Honda. I'm not so branded when it comes to cars. There, but there's some things I am very branded about. Like my J's. I'm very branded about that. I, don't give me anything else. I'm not going to say no names because I don't know if they ever want to sponsor the thing. Then I'll, I'm, you know. Oh, consider it for that particular episode. But, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not going to waver off that. So, yeah, that's that's an important one of as far as the marketing lesson before uh, you start a brand. That's good. But, uh, that's good. Moose, I, I would love to know some of the things you wish you knew before starting a business starting the brand that you have yeah i mean i i gotta start with um the the first one is this idea that being self-made starting from the ground 
struggling and grinding is the is the best and only way to do it right like being sold this idea that you 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 have to kill yourself and you have to go through all this stuff that's the only way to to be successful and i think i intentionally just that idea alone just from a, a mindset perspective i intentionally made decisions and chose a path in the beginning of my business career at least that was more difficult than it had to be just because i wanted to check off the box of i struggled i lost money i you know i i did all of those things where now that i look at especially in today's world with the advancements of tech and software and i kind of laid off that a little bit but essentially you have infinite scale by just learning a skill set and finding a gap or opportunities that those things can solve for so i have to say that for me one of the the silliest mistakes was being gullible to that to the struggle that it had to be difficult because quite honestly there are multiple maybe if i didn't know that or if i didn't buy into that i would have started and taken more chances early on but in the beginning i was still like no i i, I, I haven't struggled enough i haven't failed enough i you know i was still trying to build a compelling story rather than just focused on actually building the business so for for starters for me i have to go back to that cuz that was just the early thing in my mind that i thought you can't get to the other side of it without having done that now yeah for some people there's there's no way around that but you don't have to start from the bottom you can partner right mm-hmm. like i've seen great success in doing it that way too yeah it's sometimes it's good to start from the bottom or by yourself maybe for the sake of your own autonomy if if you really don't want to do it any other way but at some point you can do much more or start a lot more advanced by simply getting with the right people so i mentioned it even you know on the live last week where i said man i'm not interested in on this next venture or this next endeavor starting from the very bottom can i start on the third floor can can i make some moves that put me in position to do this a little bit more expedited and i think that's something that uh that can be easily avoided just without having to fulfill that that broken definition of what what it takes to be successful if you will what what's your thoughts about i guess and, and maybe it's not the same but like the you know the rise of the solopreneur where there was a a season where it was so uh shamed and like you don't really have a business if you're a solopreneur right but these solopreneurs like Dan Co and Justin Wells are making millions mm-hmm. and yeah. they're perfectly fine. You know what I mean, like, but they're, they're one, one man business. So yeah. I, I don't yeah. know if you're, if the way that you're putting it is more in that sense, like you, are you okay with the one man business or is it more of just the grind and not talk to nobody? Yeah, yeah, no. The, the 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 last of what you said, the latter, the grind and not to yeah, talk yeah. talk to nobody because I think that's that's the one that I at least grew up on. Okay. But right now I'm I know that the solopreneur is really being made available because of the digital economy or the creator economy. If you think about it with traditional businesses, the solopreneurs were looked at as freelancers, right? Mm-hmm. It's like there's a difference. Like, oh, it, it, it minimized and maybe didn't have as much income potential. But now with the with within the digital world, the, just there's the possibilities are just endless. And then you add to it the creator economy and what some of these individuals you mentioned are doing. I think it helps accelerate it where people are looking back like, okay. And by the way, j- just to clarify, being a solopreneur. um doesn't mean that you don't work with anyone. Mm-hmm. I think you know you partner with contractors or you work with contractors but you don't necessarily have a full staff or a team or employees yeah. that you're responsible for as part of your you know establishment. So that's that's how uh that's how I differentiate the two but to your original question, yeah, to definitely just lock yourself in a room for 10 years don't look like don't talk to nobody that's that's the one i was alluding to cuz that was yeah not 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 necessarily the best way of doing it 
Yeah, because even even with me, like the solopreneur thing is really, really attractive. I ain't gonna hold you. It's growing on you. No, oh man. <laughs> because one with the, the with the rise of AI, right? Yeah. The, I, I forgot. I think it was that what was that podcast with all the rich people? You know what I'm talking about. Uh yes, all I know in, what you're talking about. All in. All, all in, in or something okay. like that. The All yeah. In podcast, right? When my man said... Oh, the rich uh, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love you knew it. exactly what I was talking about, though. I knew exactly okay? what you were talking about. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, uh, the one w- where he said, with AI, there there's companies that have 100, 40 to hundreds of employees, and the goal is going to be four. There's going to be companies of people that have four employees and going to blow those other ones out the water. Ever since I heard that, I was like, I want that. I don't want a full blown staff. I want a group, like a small group of people and let's blow this out the water with certain, if, if there are people who are with one and just contracting and, and resourcing being very resourceful i'm saying that is going to be like i'm i'm studying one right now that is a beast in the content situation solopreneur just 10 15 pieces of content off of one and is making a living off of it and i'm like mm. tell me more Tell me more. And what, even though there's certain other models that I'm okay with, but I'm like, we may have to explore that as, as a situation. And I've never, I think for me, I've never been the, the full desire of building something and getting an exit. And like, that's your thing. Right. I'm like, I like building stuff and I'm okay with keeping it. I'm okay with keeping it. Yeah. If I could create a certain thing now, there's going to be so there, there has, there does have to be a model of it doesn't necessarily need me to be successful. That's, that's another thing, but yeah, I'm, I like that little solopreneur thing. I don't, I don't, it's it's a little trend happening right now, and it it really got yeah. my attention. Yeah, yeah, and no, I'm 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 hearing you talk about it more and more, so I I know it's growing on you. Um, I don't I don't know if I'm there just yet. Maybe in the early stages, I do think mm-hmm. some there there is there is beauty in building in solitude a little bit, mm-hmm. but just n- not to think that you can't. Like for example, when I say even this idea of the struggle, you know the difference in and now that I think about it, you actually spoke to it. The difference is context, right? Mm -hmm. You you can take one path and, and really grind and, and work hard because that's what you believe is your only way to success. And I'm not trying to minimize or downplay the importance of hard work. I think everyone works hard, but just the payout is significantly different Mm -hmm. versus practicing and, and shout out to my doctor friends and even Carl, who I heard use this example, who say, you know, a doctor should practice at the top of their license. And that's a term that they use internally to help people understand the difference between doing tasks that help you really grow your business based on what you are certified and licensed to do versus doing other things that, you know, are meaningless. They're just, they're just, they could be done by someone else, for example. So I I think of that in the same way you pick a business or the way you position yourself. You can position yourself to say, yeah, no, I don't think I could. But ultimately, they end up taking the same amount of time. So like whether you build an average business, a medium business, or a large but they end up taking on the same amount of time. I do think at some point the sacrifices become a little bit different, but the payouts are so different. So why take the struggle path just to satisfy, you know, there was a, a term I came across in my notes, actually. I, I must have had it for several months, but I was just going through my my notes yesterday looking for uh, some some content, and the term I came across was subconscious adoption. And it's this idea that you adopt something without knowing 
because you're not intentional or careful about who you listen to or where you get your information from or what you think is possible or not possible. So you subconsciously adopt or inherit this idea that, oh, business can't be built unless it's done this way. It's like, no, that's not true. There are so many different ways that you can build business to so many different levels of multitude. It just depends on who you listen to or what you, what you believe is the path that is achievable for you. So yeah, the, the more and more I think about it, I'm like, man, I, I, sh- I didn't have to do it that way. You know, something as simple as with, with, with my business in the hospitality industry, I was so afraid of, of people knowing that I owned a company. Mm-hmm. I, j- so what did that do? That made me work seven times as hard because I wanted to blend in as another employee. Right. Where instead of just like, no, stand out, let it be known that this is your company. This is your staff. You have to take a leadership role and oversee the operation instead of pretending to be like everyone else so that uh, maybe your coworkers or staff members don't feel like you have uh, a one up on them. So like silly little things like that. And of course, I'm, I'm going back almost seven years in time, but that that was just that had nothing to do with say just the way the business had to be run other than just the, the idea of how success was perce- perceived to be built. Right. That was like, a, Oh, now you got to do this where other people are like, this, and, and I, I, we talked about it once this idea of people who inherit businesses, you know, not everyone can relate with it, but people who inherit businesses by, by definition, they really didn't work for, or work hard to have whatever is given to them, but mm-hmm. by all means, it's it's rightfully theirs, you know. So there's a lot of different a lot of different things that come to that. But to keep to keep it relatively simple, I think just just simply thinking that that's the only way. Big mistake. Hmm. Okay, I'm I'm not mad at that. You got another one just in case, or you? I'll let you go for it. Yeah, no, okay. no, that 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 was a mouthful. I'll let you. I'll let you go. With <laughs> yeah, that first. was a mouthful. That was a mouthful. Um, okay. So for me, I think the one thing that I wish that I knew before, uh, starting my brand and it's going to be maybe a little bit confusing for some, cause it's like, Nikki, you talk about this, but the importance of branding principles, right? Like I think starting, we understand like, Oh, the brand, but I've always led with content, right? So I I thought in the beginning was, okay, as long as you have a strong, let's say mission statement, you understand who you're talking to, you got, uh, you got presence, you should be good, right? And then I, I believe everybody should read this book, The 22 Mutable Laws of Branding, where it breaks down the importance of the law of category where are you creating it first? Like we think of a market, right? Let's say fitness market. And then you can't necessarily own the fitness category. So you kind of have to create different subcategories that you particularly own. So I use this example a lot where I say, okay, if you're a fitness trainer, you're in the pool of every other fitness trainer. What's the difference between you and them, right? But if you are a fitness trainer for females who just finished giving birth and they have, they can't lose that baby fat and the baby is about like three months now and you're still struggling, if you cater to that particular niche, oh, you're standing out. Ain't nobody really checking you on that one. And you're able to write your own check when you're in that category all by yourself. So the, the law of, of category is, is something that I learned from that book, as well as the law of mind, where... You know, it's not just about being first in the marketplace. It is about being first in people's mind. So you you look at ChatGPT right now, right? ChatGPT, regardless of all the other, uh, the other competitors, are killing it 
because one, they're first, they created the own category and they continuously upgrade and, and change as, and evolve as things continue, right? Whereas let's say they was to stop evolving. This, this is their features. That's it. GPT-4, and if I'm sounding a little geek out, I apologize. But GPT-4, that's it. And then there's another one. We could say Claude 2. We could say Google. Google just came out with something called, I think it's called Gemini. And they're coming up and they're coming up and their data is a little bit better. It updates a little bit faster. They accept way more analytics, way more files, creates way more things. And then people are going to be like, okay, bump chat GPT four, like chat GPT. We were talking about that because they were first, but now this is better. Right. And so when I think about AI, I'm going, I may think about these people if chat GPT doesn't play it right. You know, um, where and we can go into sports real quick where you know when we think of basketball we think of jordan but now because he's retired right now lebron kobe was in the mix all this stuff like it it's who is staying that comes in mind first how can we control and own the minds of the consumer Rather than I'm just first or I'm just better. I'm the better quality. I'm the better vibes. Nah, it's are you first or have you created your own separate category as well as since you're separate in that category, are you embedded in in the person's mind? So I think that and of course, uh, and I think I was triggered because of the Navy where where they always said everything is uh, perception. But when it comes to branding, the law of perception is so important, yeah. right? Where, you know, it's not necessarily who's better. It's about the brand that is focused on the, once again, the feeling, like my man had said, focused on lifestyle, focused on uh, shaping how can how consumers perceive the product or the service, right? Or the brand is not, is this the better one? It may not be, but I rock with this all day. So like, I, I wish I would understand the laws more, not just the simple, the, the basics of branding. I think if, because the, another book that I, I read that I went back and, and actually remodeled, deeper than the brand under, which was primal branding, where this is where they talked about having a creation story. This is where they talked about having a creed, icons, um, rituals, you know, secret language, where this can almost sound like a cult kind of situation. But if we really pay attention, things we got to look at are churches and cults and understand why they have the communities that they have, right? Yeah. And, and not on, once again, not on no disrespect or anything, and cult definitely not on some please join one. It's not what I'm saying, but you have to look at, you know, what attracted the people, what kept them there, what kept them with the, how important the beliefs are, because it didn't even matter all the stuff and, and you know, I grew up Catholic. There has been so many bad things when it comes to the priests over there. We still have a whole bunch of Catholics. You feel me? Because the beliefs are so strong. You got some bad apples. But the beliefs are strong. You got to pay attention to things like that. Even when it comes to branding. So it's like, I, I really, for me... Well, I wish I would have taken the time to go through the different branding principles, the different laws that it had, instead of just going out there and figuring it out and doing it backwards, because it probably could have saved things like 
when I had to do from Beast Mode Digital to go into Deeper Than The Brand to realize that Deeper Than The Brand is actually a really long name and I shouldn't have never called it that because people can't even say the initials. They're like, D- I can't even say it. It's like D-T-T-T-B. Like what? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. keep it three. Why? Where did the fourth one come? Like... It's 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 those things, and that's also part of the twenty two mutable laws of branding, the the law of naming. But that's yeah, that's I will say that's one of the biggest things from. And then also, uh, uh, real quick, uh, the importance of the product service offers, like the craft a compelling crafting a compelling yeah. offer, and not just like hey, I got a product. Yep. I'm going to put a price on it. Yep. That's it. Like understanding that art. Yeah. Of value stacking. Journey. Right. The customer the, journey. The whole that, thing comes together. Yeah. Oh yeah. That I would have. a nightmare. I would have probably made a lot more money. Uh, yep. Probably would have saved a lot more money. At as least well. two years. I don't even, I'm not even lying. That's, that's about three years worth of with the figuring out right mm-hmm. there. If you can't, if you can't land that, so no, I'm just adding to what you're saying, but yeah, that definitely, that one stung a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to lie. Yeah. So that one stung. Uh, for those people who are trying to understand that too, uh, trying to understand like how to structure your offer, clarity, attractiveness, like pricing. I'm, I'm going to suggest the hundred million offer. Uh, book by Alex Hermosi. That's, I believe, one of the simplest but most effective books for understanding how to craft up an amazing offer. Um, whether it, it it goes mainly for high ticket offers, right? But I mean, there's there's so many lessons of getting to that point that you're like, damn, I've been doing this all wrong. I mean, mm-hmm. all wrong. Like that's a that's a book I'm I'm rereading as well. Like I have specific notes. He also has um a a, a website that he's giving the videos for free. Oh, so nice. his courses are free with the book. And so now I'm like I'm going over that and being like, okay, what is this particular model? And it does it go along with this because Jesus. Um, yeah, out of yeah time. that's good. So. That's good. You know, you know what's one that comes to mind that mm-hmm. was definitely painful. Uh, Is it definitely painful? I heard it in <laughs> yeah, your voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's like I, I just, I, I just want to go back voice. ten years and just, and just fix that real quick. Just ten years would have made a whole lot of a difference. But um, instead of running in the direction of that everyone's going toward, trying to do what is uh what everyone is trying to do um instead run in the opposite direction and supply the need right so for example um there was a time when at least when i joined the community everyone was trying to be a motivational speaker Mm -hmm. i was the trending thing everyone thought they can be the next et or just like et and so everyone ran in that direction and there's one person that comes to mind because he started in that direction but he quickly did a U-turn and has done phenomenal for himself. And that's Isaiah, right? Because Isaiah was like, yo, if all of these people want to be motivational speakers, well, they're all going to need content. Mm-hmm. And you know what's the one thing that all of these quote unquote motivational speakers don't know how to do is edit their content. So he he just, he did a U-turn. He started on that journey with me, actually. Like we were I in remember. the same community in that sense and just did a U-turn. I mean, and look at what he's doing now. And I'm like, man, it's genius. So I, I I have to say even to myself, we did it. And I don't want to say we did it late, but we did it on, a, on our own time with the flight assessment in building the technology. But that that's the thing where I say, man, a couple like years earlier, 10 years earlier to, to catch on that on that strategy instead of saying, hey, I want to jump in with where the mass market is going. Instead saying, okay, how can I just go in the opposite direction, not to compete against them, but just to supply the need 
of what everyone's going, uh, what, of, of what everyone will need. You know, of course, I think about a lot of the, the, the video platforms that we use, everything from like Thinkific and Kajabi. Brilliant, right? The rise of the course or the rise of, the rise of on, online learning, really, because that came before the course era. And instead of, you know, some of these other key players jumping in and saying, yeah, I'm going to create my own online learning modules. And this, and they're like, mm, well, what about giving people a place to be able to store and structure their communities so that they can have a unique experience for their users or store their, their, their content and their material in one place? You know, it, it's just a lot of that kind of thinking is actually what I'm trying to take or at least think about through the lens of AI. It's like, okay. Everyone's headed in this direction. What's what's going to be the thing that supplies the need for the people who are headed in that space? Mm-hmm. Um, because that's 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 one who who I, I think that was a big opportunity. We I don't want to say uh, it's not maybe it's not a full pain right now, but it's definitely an opportunity that was passed up. It's like oh man, if we would have caught on to that, that would have been a good move. Okay, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. S- side note, because you kind of. I kind of alluded to it. I, I actually, this could really be a, a, a episode in itself or a segment in itself. But my question to you is, with all these changes that are happening uh, in, like in the business world, market, all that great stuff, give me give me a prediction for twenty twenty four. Yeah, I think that um, as it relates to at least our stuff, (laughs) I I always want to say, you know, something without giving too much away. I'm like trying to speak within the context of what I'm comfortable sharing. I was about to say, I feel like it's weighing in you. It's weighing heavy on you. Yeah, yeah. No, I just just want to share what I can share. I mean, I think that um, there are some things that are just not going to work as well as they did. Mm -hmm. And the 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 generic approach into even using email marketing, that's something that we've been heavy on the last two years that has helped to, you know, really keep our business alive. I don't, I don't think that that's going to work the same in 2024. Uh, I think the, the young lady's name was Grace. Yes. The, Grace from the creator of the week. Yep. And she spoke to it that people are tired of being sold to. Yes. And, And the other thing is there's such a downward shift in pricing where things are not, at least information related products, they're not going to be as expensive as they once were. They're Mm -hmm. just not. Mm -hmm. And so my prediction in 24 is you're going to see prices continue to drop and value is going to increase significantly because that's going to be the way to compete. Now, the way that those products and services are going to find their way into the hands of people. It's not going to be through the traditional marketing channels. People are going to have to get creative to to really build relationships and connections with, with those who have interest in getting that problem or solution solved. Because I, I listen closely to when you say things like the, the rise of the solopreneur Well, the rise of the solopreneur is not necessarily interested in say working with too many people mm-hmm. so that's less dollars circulating in the market right it could be a very small fraction but still less dollars circulating in the market so that's 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 what i'm seeing that's what we're preparing for at least internally is how do we compete at lower prices how do we uh spice it up a little bit marketing wise it's it's going to require way more shaking hands and and kissing babies or whatever that saying is Mm -hmm. and uh, probably getting outside, honestly. So that's, that's what, that's what we're preparing for on our end and just having those dialogues to, to put us in position to compete. That's good. Uh, If if I was to, to come up with one, um, it, it, it goes along with what you're saying as far as what I'll, I'll be extremely specific of where courses just really ain't it period right um i I actually it's crazy because we are we're in a time where information is very accessible and to create 
authority, you have to put out content and you have to put out content of value, which of value is stuff that you would normally actually put behind a paywall. Yeah. And so you're you're now looking at it from people are not like you said people are not paying a thousand dollars for a course anymore now there's some that will because of the influence that the person has because of the extreme value that is being put of course right however i, I do think it belongs more towards those who have that influence rather than just that information right but for the regular smegulars it is getting harder and harder to sell that thousand dollar course that those people who have those thousand dollar courses are bringing down their prices just like how moose said so i think the the way for to combat that is once again the community is what is the culture that you're creating that is irresistible for your brand that people need to be a part of? And that everything that is inside of it is being bought. But how are you creating different experiences for them? How both digitally, both in person, right? Um, for me, I'm looking at it from because I, literally I just bought a course I saw s somebody speak on YouTube based off of uh, an interview that they were doing I love the way they the, the structure that they had I bought their course their course was about 150 that's it $150 and he prides himself of yo the products that I have probably are just going to be 150 and I realized when I got into it and I'm learning that it is literally just maybe a mini extension of what he had already said. I already understood what he said. I put, I got all my notes, everything like that. But because of the, where we are in the world with social media uh, and, and content, we have to give it pretty much all away. So now you have to, which I will always uh, scream so pretty much I'm done. You have to be creative with the connection, like how Nipsey said. So it is about experiences more rather than information. Not saying information isn't can't still be sold. It just doesn't have the same price point as it used to. And so you have to shift into what is the what is the experience that we're all going through and what are the transformation that we're doing all together and stop relying on people doing it themselves because they suck at it. They just, they, they yeah. do. And so they didn't, they thought they could do it. That's why they bought the course. Right. And then life hit them and they forgot about it. So some of us are okay with that. Some of us are like, yo, I got the money. I'm cool with that. I, I think I was hearing uh, Ali Abdal on an interview saying, hey, you know, I, m my course is about three, like uh, 3,000 to 5,000, depending on when they come in. And there's people who don't even bring in the first week's homework. Wow. And... What he also said, I wish I could find it. It, it, it actually was very enlightening to where he said some people wanted to just feel that they can, they can do that. Like they can get in that community, that they, could, they have the desire to do it and they took the first step and that was okay with them. You know how some people are like, they get the, they're like, yo, I'm going to lose weight. And I bought the gym membership and they felt so accomplished. All right, I'm taking it serious, but they never go. Yeah. That's the kind of the same concept. It's like, don't still, you can't take away their joy because at least they took their first, first step. So some people will still pay out, depending on how serious they are. There's still people who may pay that guap of money to be like, yo, I'm serious, but they never show up. 
and that's okay. But it used yeah. to bug me. I'll say that it used to bug me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, you just never know. I think there are people go through different seasons. It's funny because one of our members reached out today. She says, "Man, I feel so silly because uh, I listened to what you said." I went back and started watching some of the additional training modules that we have. It's just additional material just so that because people come in at different portions of the journey and we're not necessarily, uh, you know, we don't run on a, a tight, a tight schedule or a, con- uh, a repetitive schedule. You know, it's, it's an ongoing program. So those videos are help are there to help people who at any moment may have a question or they want a refresher. They can just jump back in and get something that, they need addressed. And so this person was reached out and was very transparent saying, Hey, I'm, I was thinking about quitting. I just don't know if this is for me anymore. So, Hey, no problem. I totally understand that. And I'm not giving you this advice to think that we want to just retain you as a subscriber. This is really what I would do if I were in your position. Mm-hmm. And I sent her a couple of worksheets that we created to help someone just navigate the first two phases of what building a business in this industry looks like. Mm-hmm. And so she went through the coach, she went through those worksheets and went back in the training portal to get the material to help her fill those two gaps. And so she wrote almost joking, but upset at herself and, and making fun of some of the other members in the community saying, Hey, this is crazy. And I feel so silly because a lot of what we ask is are in these videos, but just mm-hmm. nobody watches them. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, that that's part of uh, the, that's what comes with this territory. Like you're involved in something like this and you, you have to push and guide people accordingly. But yeah, that's, that's, that's really a, the, the, the reality of the situation, right? Not everyone is going to go through the material. Not everyone is going to show up and be committed, but that's what uh, I guess the emotional buyers uh, are there for, you know, it's like, they, they just, take that decision and say, Oh shoot, I probably shouldn't have done that. So, mm-hmm. so it's interesting. Yeah. It's, 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 it's some dope, but I'll say, I'll say one more thing, one more thing, one more take. Uh, we have to learn how to integrate AI and ourselves, or we're actually going to be less relevant. So, Meaning we already struggle with uh, standing out, right? Um, AI is just making it a lot more easier to produce more. And those people who understand how to integrate it with your real self and with your production from a business side or a branding side, uh, if you don't know how to do that, you're going to fall very very behind when I'm, I'm not going to be dramatic which i already was which is the irrelevant part but i will say that you are going to be way more behind than you already are because there are systems now being in place with ai with automation that's already there that's going to go like we said earlier from a team of 40 to now of a, a team of four to one producing as if it is a team of 40. So learn how to integrate. I mean, we're going to see more and more of integrations of the people using AI and really standing out more. And you're like, yo, because the presence part oh. is what makes us believe that this person is, is on top of the game. And there are yeah. people who know how to do that. They'll do that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yep, yep. 40. Four. 40 to 4. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It is what it is. It is what it is. Well, it looks like we're going into overtime, but that's okay. Because it is still uh, the question of the week. And of course, this segment is sponsored by Flight Assessment. Flightassessment.com. Discover your personal superpower and learn how to use your superpower to become a master communicator, strengthen all your relationships and develop the self-awareness you need to fulfill your highest potential. Go to flightassessment.com 
real quick, fast, in a hurry question of the week. Is it more important for new entrepreneurs to focus on perfecting their product or service? Okay, shout out to our service providers. Before launching or to launch quickly and refine based off customer feedback. Yeah, so th this actually is going to vary based on products or services. And it's funny because this was going to be one of my uh, hardest lessons or biggest mistakes as well. But I, I, I'll just save it since the question is here. But I think for products, you don't have to perfect the product. There's a lot of perfect products that nobody knows about. So th th for products, I think it's so much more about marketing than it is about building a great product. I know some people will disagree with this, but my take if you build a great product and again, no one knows about it, it, it defeats the, you don't have a good product, but to focus on the elements of community and marketing and branding and improving your product based on that feedback, I think you actually build now there, there's a window of opportunity there, right? You, you can't just say, Oh, I'm, I'm still improving my product. You have to get it at least functional rather quickly. Service, however, on the other side, though, I don't think you have that luxury because mm -hmm. service, your reputation is so much more on the line. And if you don't get it right over and over and over, you got but so many chances before people just label you as the person who can't get it right. And there's usually not coming any coming back from that. So I would say if it's specifically a product, yeah, don't not so much, but service you have to you have to deliver. Uh, I, I kind of agree with this. I, I think once again, I think these questions of the day or question of the week, I'm always torn. I really feel mm -hmm, like I say mm -hmm. this several they, million they times. They give you the both. Yeah. It's a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. So I think for me, it's like I'm, in the phase that I'm in right now, I do not want to fix while I am launching. I don't want to mm. fix while I, all right, shoot and then fix your form afterward. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to shoot and it goes in. Okay. Like, I, I just want to, and if that means I have to be behind the scenes for a little bit, I'm cool with that. Um, so I think for me, I would actually have to say, regardless if it's product or services, I think I wouldn't go as far as saying perfecting. That, that, I think that's a little bit deep and there's no such thing as perfection. I think we have standards, but I don't think there's anything that, that is perf like that's perfect. But I do believe having all the, all the checks in the box or however that saying is, I don't know, I said it wrong probably, but you know what I mean? That one, if everything aligns then launch it. I don't think launching quickly and then nobody knows about it. And then you have to go and try to capture attention, then listen to more feedback to see what's the problem. Is your email sending out? Do they get a welcome email or confirmation email? Uh, if it's a product, are they getting the shipping sent? Boom, 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 boom. Like, is there a, uh, you know, a follow up situation? There's a lot of things that if you launch quickly and you're looking for that fast buck, you actually will probably get disappointed. Right. That prime, prime example. What we just did with with the Patreon, we prolonged that and we made sure that everything was inside of there. Could we have launched that last year when we spoke about it? Absolutely. Could we have launched it a couple of months ago when we started talking about it again? Absolutely. But not everything was inside of there. I didn't necessarily want to play catch up. I didn't want to hear, yo, I'm in there. There's nothing in there. Like, I don't want to build. And you're like, now, granted, some people are like, we're founding members we started with the brand when they had nothing and they were great. I'm cool with that, right? They're, they're, that's a small percentage. The rest are like, this is trash. This is trash-o. I'm not like, give me my Don't money back. Around. 
Right. Yeah. Or especially if it's a subscription base, oh, I'm canceling. You have nothing. You absolutely, this is, I don't like you that much. I like you, but I don't like you that much. Mm-hmm. Like, this is kind of confusing. So for mm-hmm. me, I would say get the launch right, get the product and service right, and then go out there. Because now is, is it giving that feeling? Do you understand who you're focusing on? Do you have the, the, right, uh, the right quality? Do you have it built out? Do you have your back end good? Is the team in place? Like there's just a lot of things that you don't want to deal with just because it's very, I've, I've dealt with too many launches and you can hear the trauma in my voice probably. I dealt with too many launches where it is, let's go and we will figure it out later to where we're probably still figuring it out and was three years ago. Mm. It's just not worth it. I'd rather you wait. Now, if you already are self-aware that you are a perfectionist, you may need to find somebody who isn't. Yeah. And have an equal balance of perfect, hurry up, happy medium. Right. We still put it out there. There's maybe one or two mistakes, but there's not a hundred. And it still came out at a decent time. So that's what I'll say about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's real. Listen, people, we love and appreciate you. Uh, what would you pick? Let us know uh, what what you would pick. I feel like I, I really want to go more in on this in the after show uh, because I, I really want to go into why I was so passionate about, <laughs> like you heard, like I said, you heard some of the pain because I think there's just certain strategies that aren't talked about when we are launching and we are with uh, when we are the ones that are just like the executors of like, I got an idea, let's go. Speed kills. Speed does not kill. Okay? Stop that. Speed doesn't kill all the time. It kills you. It doesn't kill. Mm-hmm. It just, just, just kills you. All right? Yeah. It kills the team. You know what? No, it kills the team. That needs to be the final word right no, there. No, that needs... It, no, 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 no. Hold on. Especially if you have a team. Right. Speed kills the team. It doesn't kill just general. I don't know. Who, who are you trying to shoot at anyways? Who are you trying to kill? What is, you hear, we're talking about this on, <laughs> on, on the after show. Please get the Patreon to get that. Um, please. Oh, listen. Listen. 2024, our live shows are going to reduce to Patreon. So I'm not lying to you. You've been seeing that we're going lower and lower. There's a reason, people. There's an absolute reason. So get it while it's hot as far as these YouTube lives, but they, they're going to go for our core family, our squad members. So go check that out. Uh, follow us on all social media platforms at Nikki and Moose. Go get the flight assessment. Okay. Be part of extreme execution, especially if you're trying to get into the coaching business. That is one of the best Places to go, systems, templates, that whole nine. You know, we you may know one of the leaders. His name is Moose. He's great, right? Then you got deeper than the brand if you're really serious about this uh, content and branding side of things. And then Moose, final words. I'm, I'm going with what you said right there. Uh, speed kills the team, uh, not the thing. Uh, in most cases, let's say that. Uh, check us out on the after show. We gon' we gon' we gonna pick this one up. I, I heard I heard trauma. <laughs> <laughs>